On this edition from the core, we learn the true meaning of sportsmanship. We visit a park that has it all. And we hear about an app that helps you with your homework. Smile, because from the core is coming your way. Welcome to From the Core, Tampa's main source for teen-related news. I'm Linda. And I'm Michelle. Our first story deals with adaptive sports. In mid-July, the 33rd National Veterans Wheelchair Games took place in Tampa. Part of the focus during this week-long sports event was to show kids with disabilities that fun and games are accessible to them, too. Olivia went to the game's annual Kids Day event and filed this report. These kids are participating in Kids Day as part of the 33rd National Veterans Wheelchair Games, where teams compete in adaptive sports activities. These are sports that have been modified to allow athletes with disabilities to participate. Kids Day for us is really important so that we can come out here and mentor those young people that with disabilities and teach them that there's a lot of things that they can do regardless of what their disability is. There are kids from all over Florida and other states too. Here, the goal is to inspire kids and build confidence. I would hope that they all walk away with the fact that, yes, we can. We can do a lot of things, a lot of things we didn't think were possible. Each child is paired with an athlete who is participating in the National Veterans Games. These experienced athletes help mentor the children. Having some of our athletes come over and work with these children, our athletes are disabled, the child sees that we're disabled, and they see what kind of abilities our athletes have, and hopefully it inspire them. One of these veteran athletes is Derek Trenton. He has been competing in the games for seven years and has been a mentor for three years. We support each other. That we're not out there to win. We'll stop and help the other guy out. The uh, team sports are usually pickup teams when we get here. So each year you play on a different team. So the guy that you won with the prior year, you're probably going to play with him against him the next year. And so the spirit of competition is intense, but also the spirit of just helping each other out. Kids Day athletes Carlos and Scarlett explained that although the competition is fierce, the greatest reward is the team interaction. These kids are more like brothers and sisters than teammates anymore. Because you've just, when you're with them for so long, you get so close for playing every sport together. It's just amazing. You can go out and hang with them. You don't have to worry about just seeing them during sports. Emily Clark explains that it is not all fun and games. Just like any other sport, these games take lots of preparation. What kind of work goes into preparing for a big event like this? Practice, a lot of practice. A lot of practice. Christian Ramos, a local Tampa athlete, tells me about the sports he participated in today. Baseball first, basketball second, and now slalom. Wow. At the end of the day, the athletes are presented with medals for their teamwork and determination in participating in the youth games. This is Olivia reporting for From the Core. The wheelchair games will be traveling to another city in 2014, but you can always get involved with adaptive sports right here by contacting the Paralympic Sports Club of Tampa Bay. The club promotes the health, independence, and personal growth for people with physical disabilities through sports. We've listed the club's contact information on our homepage. Just go to tampagov.net slash cttv and click on the From the Core link. In just a moment, my friend Michelle takes us for a walk in the park. We'll be right back after these messages. I promise that as president, I will make all lunchroom items in the cafeteria free on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. <laughs> as president, I will do my best to make select lunchroom items discounted on certain days of the week. <laughs> Elect me for president and I won't let you down. So now you've heard from both candidates. Next week, you'll have the opportunity to vote for the student government president of your choice. Thank you for your time. Hey guys, what do you think of the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, look, here's something you're Hey, how are you? Uh, man. 
Hey, when you're president, when are you going to make all the school lunches free? Don't worry about it. I got this. That's a pretty tall order to fill. Yes, I mean, look at me. Like, I can take care of it. So how do you plan on raising money for the Glee Club? I was thinking a bake sale, maybe. Another, another bake sale? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. And what about prom? We'll worry about that when the time comes. I know I can't fulfill every promise that I made to you, but I can maybe give you guys some candy bags or okay. something. Okay. Um, wait, wait, guys, you forgot your pen. Someone? Anyone? <sighs> hey, can we sit here, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Can you tell us more about your presidential run? Um, I was thinking of first that first we could tackle the whole lunchroom expense kind of thing, and um, yeah. we could move on to the fun stuff like homecoming and prom. I want us all to be happy. I really care about you guys a lot. Welcome back to FTC. Did you know that there's a place where you can have a picnic, fish, and play with your dog? To top it all off, this place is only minutes away from downtown Tampa. As a matter of fact, I visited this treasure of nature to help you see that recreation is what's trending. Parks are great places for fun activities and where people can discover nature. We're taking a look at one of Tampa's hidden gems, Al Lopez Park. Recreation leader Cindy Lunis explains to us how the park got its name. The park is called Al Lopez Park because it's named after um, Al Lopez, who originally had a baseball field named after him, but they tore it down, so they wanted to give him something else, and um, they gave him a park. He was the first Tampa native to become a major league baseball player. He was a catcher. Um, he played for the Brooklyn Dodgers, the Boston Bees, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the Cleveland Indians. And he went on to manage the Cleveland Indians as well as the Chicago White Sox. And he became a Hall of Famer in 1977. Along with annual charity events like Bark in the Park, there are many activities that people can enjoy every day at Al Lopez Park. We have several different activities. Um, we have a playground, actually a couple of playgrounds for children, a dog park, a paved trail, which um, a lot of runners and walkers and bicyclists like to use, which includes a VITA course, which is a circuit training course with different exercises along the trail. There's also a nature trail with a boardwalk, which is great for people who want to see different wildlife and plant life. And we also have a couple of ponds for fishing. And we also have a community center, which includes a fitness center, computer lab, and fitness classes. We get a lot of people who say that they are very surprised that there's a community center here because they've come here for years, um, even when it was Horizon Park before, and never noticed that there was a building here. Cindy Lunas gives us her take and tells us what she thinks makes Al Lopez Park so unique. Al Lopez Park, I think, is great because it has a little bit of everything. You have the wildlife and alligators and otters and different kinds of birds and stuff like that, and fishing, as well as the indoor facility. So you really get a little bit of everything here. Thinking about spending a day at Al Lopez Park? Cindy Lunas gives us some helpful information that you may need. The phone number to contact for the park is 813-348-1172. The park opens at sunrise and closes at 9 p.m. And they could find further information by going to tampagov.net slash parks and do a park search for Al Lopez Park. Wow, it's so beautiful out here. And I can't believe it's so close to downtown. Wait, I think I got something. If I ever get any free time, I'm definitely coming back to Al Lopez Park. For From the Core, I'm Michelle. Al Lopez Park sounds like a great place to spend the day, and it won't break the bank either. By the way, Michelle, did you catch any fish? Um, let's just say I should stick to my day job. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, we'll see you guys when we come back from this break. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. 
I know. I already posted it. Okay, guys, great meeting. So what are you most excited about for this year? I'm really pumped for our guidance counselor story. Our staffers Celeste and Abby are talking to guidance counselors and students about how the guidance counselors are feeling overworked and the students are not being accommodated like they would hope to be. And I think as students, we can really relate to this story. I'm really excited about the TB2 Bulletin Board, which is hoping to expand our coverage to all 65 schools. We're going to have correspondence at each school, and they're going to text us or Instagram us or just send us a message about something interesting that happened in that week in school or an upcoming event. And if you're interested in becoming a correspondent, you can let us know through email. Oh, that sounds great. You know, I'm really looking forward to Ellie's story on the kid who's been volunteering at Ronald McDonald House this past year. Yeah, he's actually the third generation of his family to volunteer there so I really can't wait to hear his story. What about you Sohini? Right now I'm working on the newest photo for our Instagram feed. The social media team and I are working on trying to expand our presence on platforms such as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Sounds awesome. I can't wait to retweet them. Oh hey guys I'm getting a phone call from uh, one of our staffers. Hello? Hey! I'm on my way out to shoot the TV2 Friday night football event. I'm gonna be shooting fans and the action to make a photo story. Bye. That was our staffer Hannah. She's working on a Friday night football um, photo story. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. I can't wait to see what she comes up with. The rest of our staffers are going to be so great too. I know. I think this year is going to be TV2's best yet. With the new TV2 website, I'm sure it'll turn out fantastic. And with the new emphasis on social media and video, this year is sure to be a blast. For sure. It looks like we've covered everything for this week. I'll see you next week in the office. All right. <laughs> see you. Bye. Bye. See ya. This is from the core, and it's time for our commentary. We like to call it point of view, or POV for short. Being a student can be difficult, especially when you have a lot of homework. In this month's POV segment, Siobhan Plummer has an idea for an app that would help students determine how long it would take for them to complete their assignments at home. I wish there was an app for gauging how long homework would take to complete. Every night, I struggle to determine how long I can stalk Twitter and Facebook and watch Real Housewives while still completing my homework and being in bed by 11. With the app, I would be able to enter the subject, the assignment, and my aptitude in the area in order to determine how long that evening's homework was going to take. Knowing this, give or take within 30 minutes of the estimate, I could gauge how much free time I would have. This app would allow me to become even more organized and time conscious, and my mother wouldn't lecture me about having bad time management because the app would do it for me. It would be a win for everyone involved. I would know how long my homework was going to take to complete, so I would know how long I could relax before absolutely being forced into homework. My completed homework would make my teachers happy, I would know what's going on in class, and I could be in bed by 11, therefore getting enough rest so I'm not cranky and mean to everyone. Siobhan, that's a great idea. I wish I knew how long it would take to finish my homework. Life would be so much easier. So true. Now let's not forget about our shoutabouts. Here at From the Core, we would like to shout about our pal Olivia. You may recognize her as a team member of the FTC News Team. But what you probably didn't know is that Olivia loves to sing. This summer, she went to New York City to audition for NBC's The Voice. She was not chosen to be a part of next season's list of competitors, but she learned a lot and it prepared her for other opportunities to showcase her talent in the future. Way to go, Olivia. Keep belting out those songs. That's it for this month. We hope you all enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, always do your part. Also remember to relax a little and get ready for the next edition of From, From the, the Core. Core. In mid-July, the 33rd National Veterans Wheelchair Games took place in Tampa. Part of the focus during this week long event... No. 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 She was not chosen to be a part of next year's... You're next okay. Year's it's okay. Season. Season's... Park, South
sounds like a great place to spend the day. And it won't break the bank either. By the way, Michelle, 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 <laughs> Michelle, is that your new name, Michelle? Michelle. The wheelchair games will be traveling to another city. Ah, oh, I messed up. It's okay, you're good. Whatever one.